hey hey so this is what a lot of people do they take like a hairbrush like one of the default hairbrushes they make a new layer and multiply then they just select the hair which is all completely fine but then they start doing this really weird thing with the hairbrush and just going over each lock of hair which is a good thing to focus on each lock of hair but when you do it like this i feel like using a realistic hairbrush on flat hair gives a very flat amateur kind of look like it looks really weird honestly like you could tell someone's a complete amateur when they start shading like this and there's just something weird about having like a brush that's supposed to be for more detailed hair just on like a large flat chunk and then something else that a lot of people do is for their highlights they put it on an ad layer which is all fine but then they just create these big chunky highlights in the middle of their shadows and stuff and again it's as flat as their shading which just looks very amateur again there's no right or wrong in art really unless you're going for a particular style but i feel like the style is very very amateur like so i'm gonna show you what i would do instead as a professional gotcha editor i don't even think that's a thing but anyways creating a new layer i will then tap with the bucket and you could adjust the settings if your bucket's like overflowing but doing this enables for thinner line art which kind of hacks away the whole thing where some people draw line art over their character i'm very lazy and i assume you are too so that's why this hack is a good idea anyways so now you have the base color all on a different layer so i want you to alpha lock that get an airbrush and then choose the saturated color of your base color layer and just brush it onto the bangs this gives the illusion of transparency on the bangs which gives your hair a little more dimension when you give your hair a little bit more dimension it just looks better anyways using dip pen hard here are my stabilizer settings i like to have force fade on it enables smoother lines i then like to just select the line art color of the hair and then i just like to do this little thing where all the hair already like i just like to make the lines go even further for a more detailed kind of look because this doesn't really take much brains you just see where the lines are and then you just continue extending them if you hear sounds in the background it's because i have three dogs in my room one biting its nails one licking the wall and one staring out the window like the sad little emo girl she is so again back to the tutorial z stop sorry she's starting to bite her daughter anyways so again just continue doing this to each lock of hair and like each line that you see my dog is barking my other dog i have four dogs i'm gonna let my dogs out now <laughs> give me a second okay back hi all right so you don't have to do this on every single line that you see it takes a little bit of judgment but you know you could just like see a line and then you just want to continue it up and then you want to try to connect like as many lines as you can to the top of the head just so that there's a bit of a root and you don't want to make the line straight make everything curved and then here over here you see that I just made the hair pop out a little bit. This gives it more of a 3D look because when you draw a lot of things, a lot of times you want things to look a little more 3D. It's okay if you have a flat style, very flat cartoon style, but I generally like to give things a little more dimension as you can see here. Anyways, so, what you do is you select each lock of hair, create a new layer, go to multiply select the base color and then using dip pen hard sorry then we're gonna go over and use pen fade and I just reset it the brush because I edited it before so just one brush at the top and one brush at the bottom okay that's all we're gonna do and it will kind of create this kind of shiny look for the hair and don't just do a straight line i need you to follow each lock of hair so that again it gives each individual lock of hair some dimension anyways i select each lock of hair so that everything kind of just stays within the lines and it doesn't go overboard and you see already just this alone can be a style you see it looks very glossy it looks very smooth but it also looks a bit 3d in a way now 
Again, you could stop here if you want once you finish up all your locks of hair, but you don't need to do that. How many times have I said locks of hair? Anyways, so here, this is a very good kind of like base area to work with and I'm very proud of that. A lot of people neglect their back hair, which is completely fine. You can do a little bit of the back if you want or you don't have to, but I think it's just a good idea to test around because usually when I have a style, I make certain exceptions depending on the particular character. Anyways, lower the multiply layer if it looks too intense for you. This looked too intense for me because we completely lost the color of her hair from like this light amberish color turned into this dark brown, which is why I want to just lower the opacity. That way we can still see the shading and get the form, but it doesn't look all, you know, it doesn't look super dark. Anyways, we create a new layer and then we have it on multiply again. And now, again, we're using pen fade for this step as well. I haven't changed my brush. I am focusing on each lock of hair. I know I say that all the time, but I'm focusing on each and every single lock of hair. And I'm just creating a shadow from where I imagine the shadow is being casted. Like, you know, if one thing of hair is in front of the other, then there's going to be some shadow casted on the area. So I'm just looking for little areas that shadow is supposed to be casted. And right now I'm just clipping everything to the base layer. But, and I know you're thinking, oh, how can I like have an idea of where to put the shadows? What do I do? A lot of it is just thinking in 3D. Think of every single hair strand or hair lock as a little 3D silicone thingy. Silicone? Cylinder, cylinder, cylinder thingy. There we go. I forgot English. It's the only language I speak. But anyways, it takes a little practice to understand 3D form, but if you keep practicing, you'll just get better at it, okay? So again, I'm creating solid shadows, and I think it's really good in your art style to mix soft and hard shading together. It creates a more professional look in my opinion, but again, some people get away perfectly fine with just, with just doing soft shading or just doing solid shadows, and it looks beautiful. This is just a personal preference of mine, but since I started moving like hard and soft shadows together, it all looked great. Again, we're lowering the opacity, creating a new layer, and we're just keeping that on normal. And then what I want you to do is I want you to select the color and just go up and down like this little scribble. But again, it follows the form of each hair lock. That way, if you follow the form and like the direction of each of the locks of hair, it will give a more 3D effect rather than this flat kind of look. Anyways, so this is a really easy way to add details. You basically just color pick whatever you're going to draw on top of and then just create a squiggle up and down. Every time when I select um, the base color, the reason why I keep selecting the base color is because in some parts it's lighter, some parts it's darker. My iPad is dying, but that's okay. So this is a really, really easy way to create more dimension to really solidify the direction and to kind of give it a bit of that anime-ish look. Anyways, in the back hair, I lost some of the detail um, when I was doing my clipping. So I'm just creating these little shadows here and there for a little more detail. Again, the direction that I do is just an up and down little squiggle, okay? And this works with pen fade because it has a bit of a like blocky look. Anyways, using a very bright, saturated version of what the base hair is, I created these little dots as almost guidelines for where the hair highlights are going to be. Then I create these kind of little like rough squares for the highlights, and it gets thicker at each end of the head, but then goes thinner in the middle, which kind of just shows like a little bit more dimension again. And again, you could see that I'm lowering the opacity because a lot of times when new editors create things, it looks very intense and it looks very artificial. Creating a new layer, we're using dip pen hard and I'm putting force fade on again. But let me show you something. Um, so you see, if you just create a strand, there's no outline. So ignore my neighbor's dogs. So instead what you do is you go on edit your brush, go on type, then click double, okay? And then you select current shadow color and then you just change the outline color to whatever the like just a dark version of whatever your base color is 
Anyways, I'm adjusting the shadow size, which adjusts like the line art around it. And this is, has to be on a new layer, okay? So now I'm just creating these hair strands. And it's good to keep color picking because the hair color changes depending on where I'm doing this since we did all the shading. And another tip that a lot of people don't really do sometimes, well, a lot of beginners, when you're creating hair strands, you need to follow the direction of each hair lock. That way it'll look more natural. In addition to that, you should also change the sizes of each of your hair strands. You can use big clumps and then you could do smaller clumps. This gives things a lot more of a natural look, okay? Anyways, if it looks a little bit weird, don't worry, we're gonna erase certain parts of this soon, so don't worry about that. But anyways, I just want you to continue selecting areas. And you see, sometimes I draw a line and then I erase it because it just doesn't look right. And that's okay. It's okay to erase certain things or to try something new and it just doesn't work out. It's all a part of the learning curve. I'm not a professional and I know for a fact neither are you because why else would you be watching me? So, <laughs> I'm sorry. So anyways, just take a soft eraser and then erase the edges or just erase one edge leading up to the hair strand and here over here I tried to save this little hair strand and I realized hey it looks better without it so I just erased all of it anyways again you could see that I'm erasing certain chunks and I'm creating new chunks and yeah this is just a final step and you don't need to do this but I think it looks a lot better when you do Again, if you haven't noticed, I did turn off the double and I went back to mono. Mono means one. So there's no longer that line art and I'm just creating these strands within the hair locks. It's not branching out of the silhouette of the character. Anyways, so you can see the difference. It looks way fluffier. New layer and then we're going to overlay. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick everything into a folder so that I can clip the overlay layer to the entire base and nothing can run out of it. Anyways, so as you see, there I clipped it. And then I'm just using Airbrush Normal. I'm using a very light saturated color. And then I'm just dabbing it onto the middle of the hair and to the sides. And you could move around and you could choose any colors, but I like to stick to warm colors. And I put on the highlights for this really warm, pretty glow. And then I like to use pinks or purples or blue on the back hair because it gives it more color and dimension. You can use whatever colors you like and I rather use an overlay layer instead of an add because overlay isn't as intense but I feel like it gives you an opportunity to make things look more saturated. Anyways, I'm just creating a nice little rim light at certain areas of her hair just to give it a little more dimension and make it so much prettier. Anyways. I really appreciate you watching, and that's all. See ya.